iPhone 14 Pro Max has been on the market for well over six months. And while I've covered this phone extensively, we're about mid season here and we're about midway through the year. And we're getting really closer to the iPhone 15 Pro Max, 15 Ultra, whatever, 15 Pro Ultra, whatever they wanna call this thing this year. We'll have to see later, we're getting very close. I've had this smartphone since it very first launched the very first day that it went on sale. And in this episode, I wanna to talk to you about my honest review of this thing all these months later. Now I did make a six months later, I believe on this phone, but I wanna give you my honest take now that we're getting closer you know, to the next iPhone. We're starting to think about that. Rumors are dropping. Also, now that the S23 Ultra has been out a while, I might give some references to that. And other phones are starting to come out. Xiaomi 13 Ultra. There's a lot of devices that are coming as well. We're going to see Pixel devices soon here in May, more than likely, maybe a Pixel Fold. But I want to give you my honest take here on this one. So there's gonna be a lot of subjectiveness in this video on the iPhone 14 Pro Max. It's not gonna be all just, you know, object. It's not an objective review. So if you wanna see that, this is not the one. I'm gonna give you my honest take on this baby. So let's begin with the price. This phone I paid well over $1,200 for. Was it worth the price? The answer to that question is yes. Reason why is because I highly value great cameras and they really went to town with the 48 megapixel camera. Now in the camera world, you are going to pay well over $2,000 to get a Sony camera with multiple lenses and stuff like that. And having great cameras on a smartphone really to me makes the price worth it. Um, mostly too, because the 4K video on here and the actual performance of these lenses do rival professional cameras. And for that reason alone, I do feel like the price point of these phones are really kind of worth it. Um, also, the way they actually, you know, work in social media applications like Instagram, as well as some others, they're just super smooth. Photos look great. No matter which, you know, you're using, you can go ahead and follow me here if you're interested. This is where I post things about my life as well as about mostly about smartphones and technology. So Nick Ackerman channel, Instagram handle right there. But anyway, shameless plug, we will have to say that you are going to definitely get really good cameras for the money there. Also, having this stainless steel material, I've been talking about this for years and I sound like a broken record player at this point, guys. But honestly, I pick up this phone and I feel like I'm holding a top quality device every single time. Now, why Apple has been doing this for a long time and it's getting kind of boring you know, seeing the same design, that is true. I'm not gonna deny that. I still feel like at least if you haven't had a Pro Max or whatever, you're still holding a super premium device. Now inside the box of the iPhone 14 Pro Max and 14 Pro, you only get some warranty guides, a lightning cable. In addition to that, you do get an Apple sticker as well. So not a lot going on in the box, but one thing I do like is that their boxes are a little bit more environmentally friendly and they're very thin now. So you don't really feel like you're getting a super heavy you know, box anymore. So there are makers out there still putting thicker boxes, but some of them are also giving you chargers. Yay. We probably, you probably already have a lightning port if you've been using iPhone at this point. Now the dynamic Island here, this thing is pretty cool. I mean, it's not as useful as I thought it would be. It just kind of sits up there and you know, it kind of just fades into the background. I don't really even use it all that much, to be honest with you. Um, it just kind of works in the background. And while it's a cool thing, I'm being totally honest here. I don't really find it all that useful besides the here and there cool little thing where you can like, answer calls and see a couple of things. So I don't think this feature was a breakout feature for Apple. Although I do like one thing a lot about this feature. And that's that it definitely separates it as an iPhone. When you see this, you know that the person is using an iPhone device with the dynamic island up there. So definitely I want to see it come to the iPhone 15, 15, the regular 15 models, and maybe the 15 plus. So it's not just a, a it's not just kind of exclusive to this phone. Now I will say that this phone right here, when we're talking about the body and the build, we talked about the stainless steel. I did get some scratches here, and honestly, I'm not very happy about that, but I do have to say that, you know, with these painted stainless steel edges, you are gonna get some scratches from just putting the lightning port in there. 
off and on. Now I have dropped this phone several times since purchasing it. And honestly, it's held up very well. Although in a case I did have my wife actually have a, she had a 14 pro. She has since went back to a 13 cause she didn't really care for the cameras, uh, how they did the new aperture where it kind of like blurs the background a little bit. She wasn't a fan of that. So she went back to the 13 model, but the cameras, she did hit the, the ground with it and cracked the cameras. We had a whole fiasco where we had to fix that at the Apple store. At the end of the day, this phone is not bulletproof, but it is a very sturdy made phone. So any decent case will protect this easily. And um, unless you hit it on a really bad drop, you're probably not gonna destroy it too much on a few drops. I still would not keep this phone by itself. And if you're wondering, where's your cases? They're right off to the side of the frame of the video. I take them out of the case for the video. I use, I like these cases because they cover the whole camera. This is no sponsor for this brand, but I will leave the case linked below because I know a lot of people get annoyed when I don't leave the case that I'm showing in the video linked below. They have this in multiple colors, but what I really like about this is that it's a silicone. It covers you know, pretty much everything very well, and it really protects the camera, which is very important to me. If I drop that camera, that means I have to get a whole new iPhone. I'm not doing that, or I have to go get it fixed with Apple Care. so I'm not trying to do that, so I do use a case. Now, moving on to display of this phone. Honestly, by this point of the year, I think we're at the point now where displays don't really, you know, it's not something that I look at and I'm like overly impressed with anymore. Apple has made this display so bright, so vivid. I mean, it's not the most vivid. Samsung has taken the crown there, but it's very sharp. It's vivid. And again, it doesn't have the highest PPI or the most saturation, but it's very well tuned. It gets incredibly bright outdoors. It's so bright, in fact, that I never really have it all the way up. And it has dark mode, obviously, just very crispy. And overall, you know, displays on most smartphones are amazing. If I compare this to a OnePlus 11, an S23 Ultra, Xiaomi 13 Pro, whatever it's going to be, it's all going to look good here. So yeah, that's my PS Gamer tag. I don't really play too much, but if you want to check it out, that's that's my PS Gamer tag. But anyway, you know, it's not the most sharp out there. There is higher PPIs, but nobody's ever going to notice. It still has really good panel. I don't like how Dynamic Island gets in the way, though. I don't care that it's been six months later. I literally still can notice that it gets in the way. And there is an iPhone 12 with a notch. You know, that also gets in the way. But with Dynamic Island, it's so obvious because there's also some screen around the Dynamic Island. So I just, I'm just drawn to look at it. Like my eyes are just like beamed on it a lot of the time. So I definitely do not prefer this phone for media consumption. You know, when I pinch into the full screen, you know, I'm watching a video. I don't really like to pinch full screen on this phone because I just can't stop looking at my vitamin pill up there. That's why I like to call it because it looks like a Tylenol or something. But definitely, I'm not really feeling that. But overall, this display, just incredible. Months later, honestly, I, I don't really have an issue with it at all. It's incredibly smooth as well with this adaptive refresh 120 hertz. Now, performance with this phone, with the Apple A16 Bionic, you've seen it in multiple videos, went out in Geekbench, went out in a lot of areas. But one thing what it really retains that a lot of smartphones don't actually give you is the incredibly smooth consistency. You'll find that on a lot of phones in the higher end bracket, but where Apple really shines is developers really spend their time to make flawless executed apps here on the you know iphone so it just feel it just feels like sometimes the applications just are a little bit better designed or a little bit smoother have you on the iphone i was looking at some athletic shoes but it just looks like it's really it's just it just feels like the animations or something are just just nailed like it just it's just really polished and premium to the eye so performance wise faster than most phones out there and several months later, again, it's really about that smooth experience, the consistent polish. The software is what really does it here in 2023, you know, having great applications with no lag really at all. I will tell you one thing, though, and I'm going to be totally honest with you. This phone hasn't been perfect. There's been times where the lock screen has locked up on me. I couldn't get in. By the way, this was a picture I took when I was in L.A., but definitely, you know, this this whole phone it hasn't been perfect. There has been times where apps have crashed randomly, and I haven't seen any crashes on my S23 Ultra, so I'm not saying it's 
perfect. I'm just saying that it's incredibly consistent and smooth 99.8% of the time with a 0.2% chance of a crash here and there. But it rarely happens. And some people who are watching this video are like, what is he talking about? They've probably never seen a crash on their phone. But And then if it has crashed, usually it's a bug in a particular software version. Now, speaking of software, moving on. How am I feeling about the software? I feel like the software is rather boring these days if you're into wanting newness. However, it's so well executed and it's been very polished over the years. They're on the 16th version already. We're going on iOS 17. And it's so like melded into your life if you use iOS, Mac products, Apple Watch products, iPads, whatever, Apple CarPlay. This stuff is so melded into the like, into the fabric of your everyday existence. You're using this stuff like you would use a microwave or a refrigerator. It's just, it's like an appliance, but it gets updates. So you are constantly seeing new features and stuff like that. So truthfully, the software, while not super exciting to use, it's kind of boring, honestly, it just works and it works very well. It's super smooth. I don't like how you can't, you know, customize the app library. Maybe we can do that in the future. Customization is lacking. No split screen is super lame. I feel like super lame, like super, super Apple. This is super lame. There's no split screen on a phone at this size. It's ridiculous. Honestly, all these years I've been saying it and I'm going to say it until you bring it to the next iPhone. But honestly, it just works and it gets really good software update. And I feel very safe using this software because Apple pushes out updates regularly. They care about the product and they want you to you know, stay using it and they want to show you that they care about the software and they, they protect your you know, privacy and security as best as they can with the multiple updates. And yes, we all know applications are tracking, but in the app store, they will tell you they're actually required to tell you what they track. If you just scroll down and just kind of dig around, you'll see data linked to you right here. You, you know what's happening. It's not like it's so secret. And they also give you the option to ask if you want to be tracked or not allow and stuff like that. So you do have that option and there are some more settings you could do to turn things off. So there, I'm not saying it's perfect. It's not hundred percent private. No smartphone is probably the most private, but security wise, I feel pretty secure about my data using a phone that gets software updates from the top smart, one of the top smartphone makers in the entire world. So I'm not concerned about that. Now, moving on to the area of battery life, I got to tell you months later, the iPhone 14 Pro Max easily makes me a day and the standby time is always incredible for iPhones. I really love how when you're not using the iPhone, it really doesn't use hardly any battery. It's, it's, it's really nice. In addition, I have been doing pretty good charging habits. So you'll see me still at hundred percent capacity. But what I will tell you is that this battery life, because of this higher brightness screen, is not as good as my 13 Pro Max. So while I can praise it for still being good, I cannot say it was better than last year. And it, it's just not getting better. It doesn't matter how many updates Apple has pushed out. This phone does not have better battery life than the prior 13 Pro Max. And that's super lame. I don't like to go to a new phone that costs more money and then get worse battery life. So I hope Apple makes the next Pro Max or the next Ultra, you know, really long lasting in battery. That would be one of the key elements because the longer the battery life gets, the better. It just in increases the overall experience. And while all these phones these days, these more premium ones can easily make a regular person's work day, you know, if you're using it heavy, it's still an every single day, you got to charge it. This phone can go two days, but those are light users. Let's be real. If you're using the heck out of this phone, it's an every night charge. And that's for most premium smartphones out there. So battery life, very good. Charging speeds could be faster. No USB-C, super lame still. I would like to see USB-C on the next phone. And the reason I'm saying that is not to bash. I, I know that, you know, lightning port is great, but I want to see USB-C because the iPad has it, the Mac has it. It's just nice if they get it on the next iPhone. So USB-C would be great here on this phone. The next area is camera. Camera is just really something I talked about earlier, but it's just really something I love about this phone. I don't want to go on and on. We've talked about this multiple times already, but it's the consistency of the front facing camera. The differences in the varieties you have, the ultra wide, the zoom. And while this phone doesn't zoom super far, one thing I noticed is that phones that zoom really far because of their smaller sensors, this doesn't really pay off too much. 
it does on the S23 Ultra because of their post-processing. So Apple can really increase the zoom. Um, that's probably the biggest flaw here. But when it comes to the pure quality, the post-processing, the cinematic, the natural results you get with this phone, I think majority of people are going to love the results that come from this phone. It really reminds me of a device that can replace a you know mid-tier actual camera, like a $1,000 to $1,500 camera. This could probably replace that. I'm not going to say a $2,000 you know, $3,000 A7 series with all your full frame lenses, but some cheaper mirrorless, some cheaper one inch sensor cameras, while those will do better in low light, for the majority of smartphone users, for the majority of users out there who just want to take generally good photos and videos, this thing can definitely replace that stuff. Honestly, I've made videos on this channel, didn't even tell you I was recording with this and you guys didn't even notice. You, you were like the quality, you, you didn't even say anything about the quality, you didn't even notice I changed. That goes to show you that, and because look, I'm shooting right now on a one inch sensor Sony. I absolutely adore this camera. I've been using it for over a year um, and you guys seem to like the quality. So I'm going to keep using it for now. But if I use this and made the next video and didn't tell you what well, you probably would know now, you wouldn't actually care. You would probably just think it's just another video. It's a, let's, let's watch, you know? So that's what I'm trying to say. Now, if you're a professional, you know, all the ins and outs of cameras, you definitely will find value in actual cameras, but this thing, I mean, we're getting to the point where do you really, really need a professional camera unless you are actually a professional? You answer the question for yourself. Now, audio quality is booming on here. It's excellent. The phone call quality is also great. Hold on. Let me, let me check this real quick. The phone quality is excellent as well. Apple has really gotten better at their reception string. This phone has been solid in all respects. I haven't really had any issues. And Samsung, while I think they're probably the better for this stuff, I still think Apple has really caught up. They're doing much better than they did on the 11 Pro Max days when we had the Intel stuff in there. So definitely super good, super fast, 5G. It's all there. Um, what else can we talk about here? Face ID, still feeling kind of like iPhone 10 days, just with a new look with the dynamic island. So it's just kind of like tried and true face ID. I still would have liked to have a fingerprint sensor on the home button as a second option, touch ID in display, something like that maybe, but not there. Silent switch is as classic as ever. And at the end of the day, I still love that this phone gets a great resale value when I do decide to get rid of this one right here. But honestly, mid season, would I recommend a person to purchase this now? Honestly, I don't know. At this price point, it's quite high when you're only like four or five months away from the next one. So it's kind of a tough recommend unless you absolutely don't care about being on the latest and greatest that is coming and you just want a smartphone that's top tier right now. In that case, I could recommend it. But if you're looking for a long term and you could wait it out, I probably would wait just because you're probably going to see an improved version of this in terms of the battery life maybe even improve cameras once again. So you're kind of spending a lot when the next greatest is just not too far away. So the only person I would really recommend this to is just someone who wants to upgrade now. They're just ready to go. And um, honestly, it's still great. Like I, I find this phone is going to be an amazing device over the next several years. I still can't get over last year's iPhone 13 Pro Max. I mean, the 13 Pro Max was probably... This phone almost feels like it was unnecessary. Like Apple could have took their time, just skipped this one and made the next iPhone because the iPhone 13 Pro Max is so similar and it's cheaper. They could have probably just, you know, do like they did with iPad Pro, just wait an extra year and made it made it a two year cycle. What do you guys think about that? I don't know. Let me know your thoughts down below. But that's my honest mid-season review of the iPhone 14 Pro Max. If you guys have any questions, comments, please consider dropping them down below in the comment section of this video. Thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already. Nick here. Be sure to be well and peace.